us worship. Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture. Today, if you would hear his voice, if we would just beckon unto his voice and hear him calling our name, it's worship time, people. It's time for us to worship our God for his wonderful works, for his mighty acts. Hallelujah. Let us pray. God of our creation, God of the heavens and the earth, God who has seen us down through the years, God, we thank you for this moment and we thank you for this hour. God, we thank you for how you have kept us and how you have delivered us. God, and we just want to magnify your name on this morning. God, we thank you, God, because you've been good, God. God, you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. God, we thank you for how you have kept us and brought us out of the ashes, God, of this global pandemic. And God, we have declared that we're going to be different. God, we're going to love our neighbor differently, God, because of what you've done in our lives. God, we're going to love each other different because of what you've done. And so, Heavenly Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, you have shown yourself to be mighty. And God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, as you continue to show yourself mighty, God, that you might move. God, as we proclaim your name and proclaim this uncompromised gospel, God, on the internet, God, on Facebook, on YouTube, God, move like you've never moved before. God, you've already shown us, God, that you're bigger than these four walls. God, continue to do that. And God, and we'll be so careful to give your name all the honor, the glory, and the praise. It is this, I pray, in Jesus Christ's name, the one who bled and died for us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey. 
Well, we rejoice in this moment. We give God thanks, praise, honor, and glory for all that the Lord has done. For we understand that God's grace is continually sufficient and blesses us even in this moment. For the scripture says that when Jesus entered Jerusalem, that uh, the people came waving palms in the air and declared, Hosanna, glory to God in the highest. They declared, glory is the Lamb of God, that they worshiped the Lord, that they laid their cloaks on the ground so that uh, the donkey could make his way over with Jesus on it. There is something about the anticipation of this moment that I believe Jesus is up to something. And I celebrate and worship. Watch this. Before it even happens, I give God glory for everything that is about to take place. So I worship. I say glory to the Lamb. I give God praise. I say glory to the Lamb. With anticipation on tiptoes, I say glory is the Lamb. Because the Lord has done it for me before. And when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all that the Lord has done for me, all I can declare, even in this moment, even in the season of COVID, even in the season of economic stress, even in the place of almost losing my mind, I believe Jesus is about to do something, so glory is the land. 
declare God is worthy. I declare he's worthy. There's something about to happen. So we receive him in celebratory fashion. We worship the Lord. We praise him as he makes his way into our lives. Are you ready? That's the question this morning. Are you ready on this Palm Sunday? Are you ready for what the Lord is about to do? Are you ready for what God is about to do? Are you ready for the blessing, for the way that the Lord is going to show up and show you what is about to take place? So while you're ready or while you're waiting, you might as well worship. Can I help somebody real quick? While you're waiting, you might as well worship. Declare glory is the lamb. Jesus is the lamb and he's worthy of all of our praise. We welcome you to this worship experience. That this is what this is all about. Coming together and declaring that God is still able to speak to our hearts. God is still able to speak to our hearts with uh, regardless of sanctuary, regardless of space. God still ministers to us through the power of the Spirit. We hope and pray um, that you are even now preparing your hearts, that your hearts are already set uh, for this worship experience and what God is doing in this place. We are grateful to be here and to share with you. Good morning. New Calvary Baptist family and friends of New Calvary, how blessed we are by this wonderful musical aggregation. Please put your hearts up and your likes up and just show your appreciation for God blessing us in this moment. Listen, I'm going to do my best to get out the way so we can just continue to worship. I have some announcements for you this morning, uh, so please uh, be mindful. I want to let uh, everybody know uh, and share um, that next Sunday, that as this is Palm Sunday, next Sunday, April 4th uh, at 10 a.m., we will be in uh, the parking lot for our Resurrection Sunday service. We will have park and praise as we come together for the first time. It's warmed up pretty good. It's been warming up pretty good, and so hopefully God will be kind to us in terms of our worship atmosphere and our worship space and so Sunday April 4th at 10 a.m. we will open the parking lot at 9 15 to allow those folks to make their way and so elements will be provided it is a first Sunday so elements will be provided as you enter the parking lot uh, and we will also as because we will be celebrating it is the first Sunday we will be celebrating the first the Lord's Supper together and so we are excited about that this will be a family atmosphere we're looking to come together and celebrate and share as a family and be festive as it is in Resurrection Sunday we're looking to be festive and so so there will be uh, uh, packages, there will be bags for the children, there will um, be uh, you know, a festive atmosphere as we look to come. So you want to make sure that you bring your children and come on out and share with us uh, in this celebration. There will be candy for the young people and those who choose to donate. Uh, we're talking with our youth uh, division uh, today. Those who choose to donate, you can bring um, those bags, those candies. You can bring those Easter uh, things for um, the young people. You can bring them by the church during church hours. So let me give those to you now. Tuesday through Friday, Tuesday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. You can bring those Tuesday through Friday, 9 to 2 p.m. The deadline, however, for uh, all of the candy and things that you wish to share will be on Thursday. That will be the deadline. Thursday is the deadline. But if you wanted to come by and drop some things off uh, for uh, the festivities before the gathering, please make sure that you do that. Want to make sure that we say thank you to the New Calvary Baptist Church family as we receive several cards and thanksgiving and gratitude uh, to the New Calvary Baptist Church family for the outpouring and support of the beloved NCBC, the family of Sister Layla Banks, as we hear and share, uh, as well as the Delk and Wallace family and the passing of our beloved family member, Sister Myra Delk Wallace. That comes uh, from Brother Delk 
and the Delk family as uh, a couple of weeks ago we celebrated the life of Sister Myra and we're grateful and continue to pray uh, for that family as well. Also want to talk about the Family Advocate Ministry. The FAM continues to do their work. There is still contactless uh, food distribution that takes place every Saturday from 1030 to 12 p.m. in the morning. Um, at the Vic Street entrance. Uh, so this is the entrance between New Calvary and First Calvary. That's where that will take place. If someone you know, also the FAM ministry is letting folk know if there's somebody you know that's been convicted of a felony in Virginia, their voting rights may have already been restored. Um, Governor Ralph Northen was moving to do that. Uh, and so you can go to the Virginia Secretary of State for verification and you can call the church office to get the email address for that uh, in terms of restoration rights, uh, but it is, I'll give it to you quickly, www.restore.virginia.gov. Now you can get that uh, when you call the church, there's some other stuff, and you have to click on the restoration rights and do that. Uh, but we are excited about giving that information because we understand that voting rights are important. Uh, and just because we have stories and history does not mean um, that we can't participate in our political process. And so those of you who are interested, those of you who know people, uh, call the church office and we have information for you. Also, we want to lift up that we thank those who continue to remain faithful even in this morning of our virtual church school. All of those who dial in and participate from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m every Sunday morning. If you are interested, please call the church office and register for a class that you might participate. We've got three classes. Um, they are going strong, so if you want to be a part of that, please sign up. Uh, we want to thank all of those who shared on yesterday morning uh, to Carlos Adams, Brother Julian McCullough, Brother Jim Rivers, uh, Deacon Emeritus, uh, Brother Anthony Freeman, and the boys' choir of Hampton Roads. They all shared, and those who planned and participated in the Brotherhood Virtual Prayer Breakfast this past Saturday on yesterday. It was a wonderful time, and we're grateful for all those who participated, and we continue to do ministry in this form, even virtually. We continue to do it outside of the box and continue to believe that God is continuing to speak in our our situation. By the way, the Women's Ministry of New Calvary uh, of Women's Connection uh, wants to thank all of the leadership for their well thought out, well executed, interactive and inspiring virtual weekend. They are grateful for all of the sponsors and all of those folks who support it uh, and participated in the week's act. Activities. Uh, please also know that this week we are celebrating the life of uh, two very special individuals, the New Calvary family. Sister Francine Gambo's uh, funeral will be held in Metropolitan Funeral Home on Granby Chapel. Uh, that's the Granby Street Chapel at 2 p.m. Uh, on March the 28th. And Brother George W. Little. Uh, will uh, services will be held right here at New Calvary Baptist Church Tuesday on March 30th at 11 a.m. The visitation and wake will be uh, March 29th um, from 2 p.m. to 6 at Graves Funeral Home. And we look forward to celebrating the life of um, and acknowledging both of those who have been faithful to New Calvary and who have been beloved in their journey and in their service. Please know that we continue do this ministry with your support, with your love, and we cannot do this without you, which is why we celebrate you even in our giving and our uh, fellowship as we continue to give and share in our tithes and our offerings. And please know that you can give those uh, to 800 East Virginia Beach Boulevard here in the city of Norfolk, 23504. You can bring them uh, during those office hours, you can mail that in, or uh, you can go on Givelify and make New Calvary your favorite place to give uh, and continue to share in your tithe and offering that we might continue to do the operations of God's church and be faithful in those moments. Please like and subscribe to all of the social media platforms that we are putting together as it is important for us to continue to grow and to share in those moments. As we continue in this journey, want to make this announcement. Uh, there will be, because 
of Holy Week. There will be no uh, Bible study this upcoming week, but coming forth, we are excited. I am excited. I uh, mentioned it in Bible study the other day. Uh, my dear friend, my dear brother, uh, as we like to say, brother from another mother, uh, Reverend Dr. Reginald Wade Williams, Jr. He and I have had a conversation. We are going to team teach a Bible study series, a five-week Bible study series in regards to real talk, understanding and examining spiritual formation, African-American spiritual formation. We're going to talk about what it is and how we come to this understanding of faith and understanding of religion. We're going to unpack uh, the faith journey of, of African-Americans and unpack how that applies to our present day. How does this faith that we talk about affect us in how we live? And so we're going to ask some really deep questions. We're going to talk about the generation gap and deal with those particular things. We're going to deal theologically logically with what we understand or what we have come to understand in regards to how God operates and how God blessed us. And we're going to push ourselves in talking about how we grow in spiritual maturity. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful experience. It's going to be five weeks beginning on April 7th uh, and all the way to May 5th. Now, what we're going to do is that we're going to have, because they are on central time in the central time zone and we are on eastern time, we're going to uh, split the time, so to speak. And so we're going to begin at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time for us. And those in Central Standard Time, they're going to begin uh, at 6.30 so because they are an hour behind us. It will be a Zoom uh, platform. We're going to operate on the Zoom platform. We will send that out on social media and we'll make that known uh, next Sunday what the Zoom address is. But we are indeed excited about these two two sister churches sharing and growing and examining uh, our current journey in faith and seeing what God has for us to do. I believe it's going to be a blessing, and so you want to get on there and share with us as we journey together in this particular place. Uh, we are preparing our hearts and continue to move forward uh, in this worship experience. We want uh, to, as we have uh, this prayer list, we continue to pray for one another. We continue to pray uh, for members who have solicited and requested uh, the prayers of New Calvary and those who we are duty bound to pray for and to share. Uh, so in this moment, we ask that you would pray uh, for Brother Robert Lee Johnson. He is the nephew of Trustee Helen Willis. Pray for Robert Lee Parker, also the brother of Trustee Helen Willis. Uh, Keith Shaylor Roberts, he's the niece of Trustee Helen Willis. Pray for Sister Brenda Morris. Pray for Sister Leonthea Miller. Pray for Patricia Ganey. Pray for Sister LaBarbara Willis. Pray for uh, Sister Dolores and Brother Joe Turner. Pray for Sister Willie Mae Little as she continues to celebrate the life of her husband. Pray for Brother Willie Turner and pray for Brother Harold Brown. They are asking and to call their names and to think about them. If there are those who all others who you are asking and soliciting prayers at this time, please put them in the comment section so our virtual minister might acknowledge and recognize that we are indeed praying for you because we believe there is power in prayer and power in the name of Jesus. So let us look to the Lord and share together as we go forward in a word of prayer. Gracious God, how we love you and how thankful we are for this moment. We're grateful for the time in which you've allowed us to be blessed. Grateful for the opportunity to gather and simply declare, God, that you are indeed the Lamb. That glory to your name as we come together, as we understand your power and the blessing that has walked with us and walked uh, beside us all of these years. So God, right now, as we continue to go forward, as we continue to lift you up, please remember us in our going out and our coming in. That the world in which we live is so filled with so many challenges and filled with so many uh, situations that can cause us to wonder what direction to go, that can cause us to wonder where we end up that can cause us to wonder if we will make it through. God, we're grateful that each and every day as we put our feet to the floor, as we understand 
that we have, you have given us a reasonable portion of health and strength, that possibility is still in your name. So God, as we continue to move forward, keep us. As we continue to dry our best, God, watch over us. God, as we continue to figure this thing of life out, continue to walk with us. We're grateful, God, for all of those who continue to fellowship in this moment. Grateful for the new Calvary Baptist Church. Grateful for folks who watch and share with us. Grateful for those who continue to pray with us even in this season where we love you God and we're grateful for how you continue to bless us each and every day so touch us God as we continue to pray for the members of New Calvary those names who have been lifted but those who have burdens on their hearts those who are living with concerns those who are struggling with certain things God we believe that you're still a deliverer and still a way maker we believe God that you can still clear out pathways and you still make ways out of no way so God we ask you to have your way right now in the name of Jesus remind us God that you're still God all by yourself that whatever it is that's above our head is still beneath your feet keep us Lord God as we continue to praise you as we continue to worship you in this moment bless us God that crooked places would be made straight bless us God that bent over backs might be straightened out bless us that clouded minds might receive some clarity that those of us who still find ourselves in the wilderness might be made opportunity to find clear pathway. God, we believe it today and we thank you in advance for all that you're going to do. So have your way and continue to lead us and direct us and in all things, God, we promise we will give your name the praise. It is in the wonderful, marvelous and matchless name of Jesus that the people of God who love God together say amen, say amen and say amen. Listen, as you continue to worship, we're going to receive this choir to bless us and keep us. Go, go ahead and put your thumbs up, put your hearts up, and receive the New Calvary Baptist Church choir as we share in this moment together.
God, how we bless your name in this moment. How grateful we are for all that you have done and all that you do. Show us, God, in this moment what you would have us to know, what you would have us to hear. Order our steps and direct us in this place. For we are grateful for the time and the privilege that is ours to hear from you and to receive a word. But somebody needs to be encouraged, God. Somebody needs to be filled. Somebody needs to be reminded that you are still God all by yourself. So have your way in this place. Lift us, redeem us, reclaim us. And in all things, we give your name the praise. We give you the honor, we give you the glory. It is that we ask that you would bless this, your instrument, to play your music of grace and mercy. That I might decrease as thou increases, and these beautiful people might see less of me and more of thee. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of thy grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and let my will be lost in thine. It is in the wonderful, marvelous, and majestic name of Jesus that the people who love God together say, Amen and Amen call your attention to Mark's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 24 through 34. Mark, chapter 5, verses 24 through 34. It reads this way from the New International Version. It says, and a large crowd followed and pressed against him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once Jesus realized that power had gone from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched me? Touch my clothes. You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. When she heard about Jesus, uh, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I can just touch his clothes, I will be healed. And immediately her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. I want to talk from this idea today, my brothers and sisters. 
showing strength when you're carrying a secret. Showing strength when you're carrying a secret. This is Palm Sunday. It's not lost on me. Uh, a day when we come to remember the coming or what has been come to known, be known as the triumphal entry into Jerusalem of Jesus. The celebration of the palms is not just a day of receiving a leaf so that we can turn it into a cross or we can hang it over our mantle or put it in our dashboard in the car. The palm is meant um, celebration and recognition that things are about to change. Palm Sunday is about, like we said earlier, about expectation. Palm Sunday is about what we look for and what we talk about when we think about God's arrival. What do we believe is possible when Jesus shows up? What kind of things can we expect when Jesus arrives? Palm Sunday isn't just a high Sunday celebration. It's, it's a moment of preparation, a moment of preparation to receive the possibilities of Jesus. Let us now forget, however, not forget, however, that we have to go through some challenges sometimes before we get to that place. We may have to endure some struggles along the way. And so I wanted to recognize Palm Sunday. I wanted to do that. I wanted to acknowledge that it is Palm Sunday. But I also wanted to honor this last week of Women's History Month. Because I think it's important to recognize strong faith when you see it. And in the church, women have indeed been faithful. So I thought it would, we would talk about the spirit of Palm Sunday in a text that focuses on a woman in the scripture. But the question I want to ask you first is, can you keep a secret? I guess your immediate answer would be yes, you can. But then again, you would have to consider whose secret you keep in and who you keeping it from. See, secrets can be juicy. Secrets can be dangerous. And some people keep secrets to keep peace, and others keep secrets to keep mess going. Some people can't live without the tea. And then there are others who don't think about secrets one way or the other. And I'm really just messing with you because I know you know how to keep a secret. I do. Especially if it's your own. See, many of us walk around holding on to some very personal private secrets. We hold on to the things that scare us, that shame us, that anger us, that contradict us, or if we were ever found out, would condemn us. It's not that the secrets that we hold are bad necessarily, but if they're found out, it could make things a lot more difficult for some of us. It would complicate things if we were discovered by other people. Truth is, despite the secrets we hold, some of us still have to keep pushing forward. Some of us still have to appear strong. Some of us still have to operate like we've got it all together, despite the secrets we carry. The good news, my brothers and sisters, is that it really doesn't matter what the secret is. I came by to tell you this morning that the Lord is still able to handle it. Doesn't matter what you try to hold on to, the Lord knows all about it. Uh, that doesn't matter what you try to cover up or the way you try to cover up. The Lord has ways of making us face it and confronting it. But the help uh, that we receive is with the Lord on our side is that we don't have to face it alone. That we're assured that whatever secrets we're carrying, God still knows how to get through to us. And we are called to remember that it's not easy showing strength when you're carrying a secret. So here it is, journey with me and see that even when you're strong, there will still be some searching. See, Jesus is headed to talk to a deal with a man named Jairus' situation. Uh, he's going to Jairus' house. Y'all know the story. Jairus has a daughter who's in desperate need of some help, and Jesus was petitioned to come and heal her. 
The text says that when Jesus stepped off the boat, a large crowd was pressing around him. And verse 25 said that there was a woman there who had her own condition. Just want to stop parenthetically and say, don't think that your issue is the only issue the Lord knows how to deal with. I don't want you to think that just because you're going through something that nobody else is going through something, just because you're facing some challenges doesn't mean that nobody else has anything to feel. There's some other folk who have got their own situations. This woman who was never given a name in the narrative is said to be dealing with the issue of bleeding. For 12 years, she was struggling with a physical condition that caused her to be in a perpetual situation for this long. Although the biological phenomenon is natural, her condition is not. Her situation has caused her to endure the uncertainty of her body for 12 years. The issue is this puts her in some places of outcast and separation according to the law. The law states that she cannot be touched or be closed or be close to during her cycle. And so her social interaction and her engagement with others has been monitored to follow. If people get too close to her, she actually has to announce her uncleanliness or stay away from people altogether. Imagine what it must feel like to announce your issues to people when they get too close to you. I mean, can you see her situation? How many of us are afraid to share our personal issue when people start to get too close? How many of us would rather retreat than share? How many of us are comfortable going up to people and sharing what we got going on and what our issue is? Most of us don't want to share with the people in our own homes or the people in our family, much less the people we don't know. So she has to announce herself for other folk to stay away or she's got to keep away and keep her own distance. These are the only two options and so she lives with what's going on in secret. Why do you say it's a secret, Pastor? It's a secret because it's not something you can see just by looking at her. It's not something you can see just by watching her. It's not something that she struggles with on the outside. It's something that she's dealing with on the inside. And because it's so personal, it's not something she wants to share. You will let me know when I'm on your street, won't you? How many of us walk around with certain kinds of secrets? How many of us are dealing with certain things on the inside that other folk can't see on the outside? How many of us wrestle with the idea that if we're found out, things will get bad for us, and if they knew what we were dealing with, folks would start to talk about us? The phone calls wouldn't get returned. The people we know would all of a sudden get too busy to deal with us if they knew the secret we were struggling with on the inside. We do a good job of looking like we got it all together. We spend a lot of time and energy keeping it just that way. If people knew that I can't go to sleep unless I put a drug in my veins, if people only knew that I'm stealing from my job, if people found out that I got to pass out drunk every night just to go to sleep, brush my teeth, and then get up the next day to make it happen, if people found out that I'm in an abusive relationship and I cover my face to hide these bruises, if people knew that I am the abuser and I don't know how to show love without raising my hand or spitting venom out of my mouth, if people only knew that I talk holy when I'm in the church but I talk to my children like they ain't even mine. If people found out that I got more than one wife or that I sleep around or I got more than one man in my life. If people knew that I go in the jail uh, for taking a life or that I'm on the sex offender list. It's exhausting because I keep working hard to make it look like I got it going on on the outside but I'm struggling with a secret on the inside. We all got secrets, understand it? That we all work hard to keep something from public knowledge. Not because it's so terrible, but because people will judge us and put us in the boxes that they want to see us in. In this Women's History Month, one of the things that we can see and recognize that there are women who are strong without question, but they are at the same time carrying a secret. Women who say, I'm pushing, but I'm scared to death. I'm pressing my way, but I'm afraid about what's going to happen next. I'm doing the best to put on a good face, but I wonder every day if I'm good enough. Women, women who show their strength, but who still carry their secrets. This woman in the text is no different. 
She's dealing with something that everybody doesn't know about, but she's got to put it on a strong face in order to do it. But watch this. It costs her everything. I'm trying to help you look at this text. Look at the verse in verse 26. She suffered a great deal under the care of doctors and spent all she had, and yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. You missed it. This woman made the investment for her improvement, but it all fell short. It's not like she didn't try to improve. It's not like she didn't try to do better. She did, but instead of help, her situation got worse. That you need to know, beloved, that sometimes what a secret takes is time and energy. Having secrets costs us something. Preach small. I'm doing the best I can. Living with secrets will cost us something. The woman spent all she had, and she went on to see several different people, but all she got out of it was debt and sickness. Some of y'all missing it. Some places we look to so we can get better cost us more than what they're worth. Some people that you have gone to that you thought would help you have only cost you more pain and more suffering. But our secrets take time, and they take our energy. Secrets cost us something. Here it is. It's not that you can't go to people. It's not that we spend a lot of time. It's what it is is we spend a lot of time going to the wrong people. I'm in the text, verse 27. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him and touched his cloak. Y'all missed it. She had tried other methods, but she went to a desperate place. And in that place, she went to a different kind of help. Some of y'all still ain't getting it. Sometimes you got to get in a desperate situation before you believe in the long shot. Sometimes you got to believe. Sometimes you got to get to the place where you've exhausted everything else before you believe in the long shot that's even possible. Can I help some of y'all? Because in this life, we got so many options and we got so many choices that the long shot never seems likely, even if it can be a blessing to you. But because we choose everything else other than what we should do, we have to watch all the other opportunities fail until we get desperate enough to take a chance on the long shot but you can bring the average stuff if you want to you can try the stuff that's easy if you want to but the truth is the long shot might seem risky but there's a blessing somewhere inside of it the doctors couldn't do it but she said if I can just get to Jesus that's a long shot but I still got a chance I'm saying there's some stuff in our lives that need to require special attention there's some situations in our lives that require us to operate with some unique circumstances that when I've exhausted all the other options that when I've exhausted all the other opportunities I'm going to give this long shot a try and I wonder if there's anybody who can declare that there's been some stuff that I tried because it was easy there's some stuff that I tried because I thought it would work faster but I realized that I had to take a risk at the long shot and the long shot was a blessing in fact you looking at a long shot right now. My, my whole life, my testimony is a long shot that what folk who thought I wasn't supposed to be here and I wasn't supposed to make it or I wasn't supposed to get far but I'm a living witness that God knows how to work and do his best stuff with the long shot. Yeah, yeah, sometimes you got to understand that this thing that even though you're strong there's still going to be some searching. She searched for this thing. She searched and still had to search even in her strength. But watch this. Even when you're strong, you're going to have to do some stretching. Uh, the woman has kept her secret long enough. Twelve years as she's been dealing with this thing. She's been afraid to interact. She's been looked at funny. People have been whispering about her. She's been murmured. She spent her time. She spent her money. But her secret is still costing her everything. But she hears about Jesus and decides to take the long shot. And the text says that when she heard that Jesus was around, she came up behind him and touched his cloak. I'm in the text. Now, let me tell you why this is important. Mark says she came up behind him. That means that Jesus never saw her coming. She came and literally snuck up on him. And she touched his cloak, which, which suggests two things. 
that she was just trying to get close enough to him. Or the crowd was so large that all she could muster was a touch on his cloak. Because it's not an accident that Mark tells us that the crowd is following him and pressing around him. But either way, all she gets is the cloak. All she gets is the little graze on the cloak. The desire, watch this, is connection. But either way, she's got to stretch to make the connection with Jesus. Here's the dilemma. She's not supposed to be in the crowd. Her condition mandates her to keep away. In some extremes, she ain't even supposed to be outside. My point is, she is violating the protocol of the social construct, but her violation is necessary for her freedom. She's got to violate if she wants to break loose of what it is that has control of her. Some of y'all are missing it. If she doesn't come out of the restriction that society has for her, she will forever be in bondage. And so she's got to step out of where she is and where people want to keep her and step in to places that can perpetuate and move her to a place of freedom. Okay, some of y'all still ain't getting it. Here it is. Dr. Martin Luther King, when he was arrested in Birmingham, Alabama, one particular time uh, for protesting uh, voting rights, penned a letter that became to be known as the letter from the Birmingham jail. It was a challenge to white clergy and other white folks who were standing by the sideline to get involved and the letter quotes an African bishop. Bishop St. Augustine considered one of the founders of the Christian church and founders of Christian theology and he said, the thought said that he quoted from Augustine said, an unjust law is no law at all. Meaning, if the law keeps people down, if the law prevents people from meeting their full potential, then that's not a law for the good, it's a law for the establishment. And if it's a law for the establishment, then it's not a just law to be enforced. It's a violation and an act of correction and not an act of criminal behavior, it's an act of violence. This woman may have been considered wrong in the eyes of Jewish law, but she is right in the eyes of God. She says, I have worked and I've got meaning and I have a right to find a way to restore who I am even if it makes you uncomfortable. That's what Africa, that's what this America doesn't get. That's what this America ain't figured out yet. That's what Mitch McConnell doesn't understand. That's what Marjorie Taylor Greene and the, the kooky congresswoman from Georgia, that's what they don't get. That we're not protesting so you can like it. We ain't protesting and demanding voting rights and demanding equal rights in the hopes that you're going to be okay with it. We're not doing this to be accepted by you. We are stretching our rights because we as human beings have a right right to restore ourselves because we are God's creation and we are just as valid, we are just as relevant, we are just as important, and we are just as significant as anybody else. She violates the customary law to be close to Jesus. She stretches not just her arm, she stretches the protocol to get in touch with Jesus' cloak. But to do this, she got to be willing to stretch further than she's ever stretched before. She's got to go beyond what people tell her. She has to look past what other people see. She has to turn a deaf ear to what other people say is possible. She has to make up her mind that she's got to move past protocol and cultural pleasantries to get to the root to get something to happen. In order for you to change, to emerge, to come forth, to be birthed sometimes, sometimes you got to risk your comfort level. You see, you can't just have an expectation. That's part of the problem of the theology with us right now, with this Cracker Jack theology we have, that you're just supposed to stay in it and it's supposed to happen. You can't just have the expectation. You're going to have to stretch for what can happen. You can't want it. You can't just want it to happen. You can't pray for it to happen. You can't just prophesy or prophesy lie that it's going to happen until you're willing to stretch. I know you're strong, but you're still going to have to stretch. That's what we, and that's what it means to show strength. Being able to stretch, being able to take risk, to put yourself out there so that something else can happen. 
You can't talk about new things coming forth in your life. You can't talk about new blessings coming forward. You can't talk about the change or the breakthrough that's about to happen and you won't stretch. You can't talk about a new life or new possibilities or even change and you aren't willing to stretch. You can't carry a secret all this time and spend all that energy, spend all that cost and not be willing to reach out for something different. That's what women have been doing for generations. Stretching into new ideas, stretching into new possibilities, stretching into new change and new areas. Women who had a smile on their face, but they were grinding their teeth the whole time because they just kept stretching. Mothers who told their children it would be all right, but they were working behind the scenes because they needed to make it stretch. Women who told their children, keep your grades up so that you don't got to worry about tuition, but they didn't want them to worry. The whole time they were on their knees trying to figure out how to make it work because they just kept on stretching. Some of y'all say, I'm tired of stretching. I'm tired of having to fight through all the stuff just to get a little bit. But I want you to know that with a little with Jesus is all you need. <laughs> that a little bit with the Lord is all you need. The Bible says in verse 29 that just because the cloak was touched, immediately after touching the cloak, she was healed. Her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. With a little bit of Jesus, the whole situation turned around. And somebody knows that when the Lord is in your situation, your situation just can't stay the same. That when the Lord is working with your situation, it just doesn't remain the same kind of way. That somebody knows that you had a little talk with the Lord and the Lord made the whole situation work out all right that God's got enough to change your situation in the cloak of his garment God's got enough to work on your situation and whatever you're facing with just a little bit of connection you just got to be willing to stretch and see what the Lord is able to do with your situation understand that just because you're strong doesn't mean there won't be searching just because you're strong doesn't mean you won't have to stretch but finally here it is that even though you're strong the Lord is going to help you to work through your shame. This woman stretches. She stretches her beliefs. She stretches her own ideas. She stretches her mind. She stretches her faith in order to get close enough to Jesus. And the text says immediately she is healed and feels a change within her. But something else happens. Verse 30 says, Jesus knew at once that power had gone out of him and he turned around in the crowd and asked who touched my clothes now watch this we already learned that she came up behind Jesus Jesus to get to the cloak she, that means that she was behind him and it says that when he realized power left him he turned around you missed it she touched him from the back and that's where Jesus knew to look. Jesus doesn't miss the connection. Jesus doesn't walk away from the places where people need him. Look, he says to his disciples, who touched my clothes? The disciples say to him, people are crowding around you. They're pressing all against you. And you're asking, they're groping, they're reaching. The disciples don't have an answer. It's all too confusing. What are you talking about? All these people groping and pressing close to you. You're asking who touched you. It's everybody touching you. But in the confusion, Jesus won't let it go. In fact, I like how Jesus says this in Luke's account. In Luke's story, Jesus said, someone touches, touched me and I know power has gone out of me you missed it Jesus said somebody needed something and they got it but I need to know who it is can I tell you why Jesus doesn't let up wanting to know who it is three reasons and then we're gonna get out of here the first reason is that Jesus knows the difference between contact and connection that there are people who have contact with Jesus a whole bunch of people are pressing up against him, but this woman is experiencing connection. Contact is about proximity. Connection is about relationship. 
There are people who like to be in your proximity, but they don't like to be in relationship with you. Oh, they can be in your face, but they can't share your space. That's for the grown and sexy people. Oh, there's some folk who want to be in your face, but they, are, they can't share your space. Jesus says these people may have had contact, but there's somebody who's made connection. The second reason why Jesus doesn't let up in finding out who it was is because Jesus won't let you siphon from what you can't speak to. You can't siphon what you can't speak to. That's shout worthy. Y'all missed it, but it's real. Jesus won't let you siphon from what you aren't able to speak to. You can't get from Jesus without having to talk with the Lord. You can't get from Jesus without talking with God. In other words, you can't get from Jesus without spending a little time with Jesus. Too many folk want what Jesus has, but they don't have the time to engage with Jesus. They don't have the time to work with or to deal with Jesus. They want from Jesus without ever talking to the Lord. Jesus wants time with you. With no time, there's no transition. With no time, there's no transformation. This relationship ain't about siphoning from Jesus. It's about engaging with the Lord. Jesus is like, you can't take what I have, what, what, you, what, you, have, what you have from me, and I not know who you are. You can't take from me, and I not know who you are. Jesus has to know the story. And the third reason, the most important for our text today, is that Jesus really wants to know who it is because Jesus really wants to release you from your shame. I'm in the text. He, she sneaks up behind him. I'm pressing through the crowd, which all means I'm trying not to be discovered, right? And on top of that, verse 32 says, Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it, which means she didn't volunteer right away and say, hey, it was me. It took her a while to get to that place. Understand, she's in violation, Understand she is out of order. Understand the consequences can be extreme. She could get in trouble because she's not supposed to be that close. She's not supposed to be there in the first place. But she does eventually come to Jesus and tell her story. See, the woman is ashamed of her situation. And she may be ashamed that she had to go to such extreme measures to do it. But Jesus says to her, daughter, <laughs> your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Y'all missed a great shout. He says, your faith has healed you. In other words, Jesus said, I need you to know that your willingness to step out of your secret place is what changed your situation. That what changed your situation is your willingness to step out of what other people tried to box you in. Your willingness to step out and try and take the risk is what ultimately became your blessing. I'm grateful that when the Lord shows me opportunity, the Lord will usher in my transformation. Jesus says to her, watch this, go in peace. Don't carry this burden anymore. I need you to live in a place of peace. Jesus is telling the woman, you don't have to live with this as a mark. You don't have to live with this as a burden. You can now walk in life and you were meant to live. You can walk in purpose as you were meant to live. This might have been a part of your journey, but you got more journey to go. You got more life to live. So don't let this moment hold you or keep you from being what God has you to be. And I need some of y'all who are trying to be strong. I need y'all to hear this. God says that you don't have to carry your secret anymore. You don't have to live through it. You don't have to see your life through it. You don't have to process through it. You don't have to view yourself through it anymore. Jesus said, go in peace. That thing has been cleaned up. You don't have to carry the burden of your secret anymore. Go in peace means that the the Lord has taken care of it. There's some people who will try to remind you of it. There's some people who will try to make you remember the place that you came from. But God says, because you are healed, you can live in peace. You don't have to carry this thing anymore. Whatever it is, God's power can do with you. You got to grow despite where you were. Where you were, you got to keep on growing. That's where you were. You got to celebrate where you are. You, you were well. You were better. 
better. And if you're not better, then make the stretch and get better. If you're not healed, make the stretch and get healed. If you're not well, make the stretch and get well. There's still opportunity for you to make the stretch because the Lord is able to fix your situation. Because the Lord will show you where to go. You're not your condition. You're not your mistake. You're not your secret. You're not your struggle. That's not your whole story. Your whole story is still being written. Go in peace. Live like you survived something. Live like there's more to do. Live like you can see more and be more. Stop carrying the pain of where you've been into where you're going and discover your peace. Jesus tells the woman, you've been freed from your suffering. You live like you can see more of what you've been through. Uh, I know some of us have been wounded. I know some of us have been let down. Some of us have been struggling for so long we forgot how to do anything else. But if you just stretch and make the connection. God will show you that you were free from that experience. God will let you know that you aren't that person anymore. You aren't that secret anymore. You aren't that shame anymore. You're walking in a new perspective. You're strong because you pressed through. You're strong because you're faithful. You're strong because you didn't give up. But now I need you to know that you're not only strong, but you're safe. God has kept you safe because you're free from your suffering and you can have some peace. You're free from whatever you are keeping and God says let it go because peace is available to you. Here it is. I'm going to put it to you like this and I'm going to leave it alone. I came it came alive to me the other day. This thing came alive to me the other day. I was in a jail. Some of y'all know I work out of jail locally in one of the cities around here uh, doing some social work stuff. I was in jail, and I was doing some work. I was doing work and minding my business. I want to say that first off. I was minding my business. Now, I don't have an office. I am a part-time person. I don't have an office. They gave me a cubby hole. They took a chalkboard, and they moved the chalkboard up against the wall. They said, the space on the other side of this chalkboard, that's where you work. They put a little desk over there. They said, this is where you work. Because I'm in a classroom, the class sometimes meets on the other side, and I work on the cubby side. So I got a little cubby hole. I'm minding my business. I want to say this. I'm minding my business. I'll share a room, big room, classroom. And I'm in that little cubby hole in the corner on the other side of the divider. Well, this one class is a substance abuse class. There's a lot of classes that come through there. One class is a substance abuse class, and they're talking about addiction and what addiction can do. That meant that each of them were talking about their struggle with addiction in the class. It was a class full of women and the instructor was talking to them and they were sharing. And I was on the other side of the divider, minding my business, working. They can't see me, I can hear them because it's just a little chalkboard. I can hear them, they can hear me. If I was talking, they can hear me. But this lady starts to talk about her experience with addiction. She starts talking about her experience with drugs in her life. She starts talking about what it did to her. That's the reason why she's in jail. That's the reason she lost custody of her children. That's the reason why her family doesn't talk to her and turn her back to her, so on and so on. She is sharing. And she starts talking about what she's done. And she ain't shy about what she's done. She's telling the truth, y'all, about what she's done. She's talking about stealing. She's talking about stealing. Um, she's talking about sleeping with people for drugs. She's talking about robbing people. She She's explicit. She starts talking about sexual stuff, sexual behaviors. She's talking about behavior she did outside, inside places. She's just going in. She's telling the story. And the girls are giggling. Some of them are giggling. Some of them are laughing. They're like, Lord, have mercy. They doing all that. But she's still going on and on and on. And one of the other inmates in the class, when another lady said, oh, girl, girl, slow down. Don't you know there's a man on the other side of that wall and you just telling your business. Don't you know there's a man on the other side of that wall? You just telling all this stuff about all the sexual explicit stuff she's doing. And what she said, I was minding my business. What she said made me shout. She said, oh, I don't care about him on the other side of that thing. I don't care who can hear me. If my business was about where I am right now, I might be embarrassed. But because my business is about where I was, I don't care who knows. Because I've been through it, I can help 
somebody. I'm going to keep on telling my business because I'm just thankful that I'm on the way to recovery. She said, nobody believed me, but I had to believe in myself. I was minding my business, and I shouted, you better tell your story. I said, you better talk about it. You better let somebody know that you've been changed up in this thing. She said, I ain't embarrassed about this thing. I ain't got no shame to my game because I know how far I come through this thing. I shouted on the other side, tell your business, girl. Tell your business. Some of y'all missing this thing. If your business is about what you might be ashamed of, but if your business is about where you were and not about where you are, you don't be ashamed of the gospel. But tell somebody what God has done for you. You're not ashamed. I'm thankful. And if you are the long shot, you need to give God praise and say you looking at the long shot because when they counted me out, God's still working with me. When they gave up on me, God is still working with me. When they said it couldn't be done, God is still working with me. Oh, I wish somebody was here who could high five somebody and shove somebody and say you looking at a long shot. You worshiping with a long shot. If you knew what the Lord had done for me, you'd say that ain't nothing but a long shot. I ain't embarrassed about where the Lord brought me from because I ain't there no more. That's where I was. This is where I am. Look, Jesus says, you've been set free from your suffering. Go, here it is, in peace. Go in peace. You've been set free from your suffering. I know what they used to call you. I know where you used to go. I know what you used to do. I know what they used to think about you, but here it is. You been set free. Now let them handle that. Let them carry it for you. It ain't even their business, but they want to carry it, go ahead and carry it. If you've been delivered, then go in peace. We extend this moment. We give God praise, honor, and glory for all God has done. We extend this moment uh, that there may be somebody who wants to share with the New Calvary Baptist Church family. Maybe somebody who wants to be a part of the New Calvary Fellowship. This moment, this time is for you. Doesn't matter where you live. Doesn't matter where you are. We would love in all things to see you. We would love in all things to worship you when we return to worship. But if you decide or if your heart leads you to be a part of New Calvary, even virtually, now that we want you to do that, that number is on the screen. You can reach out. You can connect. And somebody will indeed get your information and share with you and celebrate with you what God has in store for you as a member of New Calvary Baptist Church. Whatever your experience, whatever it is, we believe God is still in the blessing business and God is still turning our stories around. We want in all things for you to know how much, how fortunate we are, how blessed we are for you sharing with us in this worship experience. And we're grateful to all those who have blessed us. We're grateful for this choir, grateful for these musicians, grateful for Minister E. Brett Baum Moore for ushering the spirit with us even on today. Grateful for our AV ministry, all folks, Lottie Dottie and everybody, y'all who continue to share in this moment. So make sure you know and remember next Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, gates will open at 9.15 as you come on and share with us uh, as we worship and as we celebrate the resurrection of our Savior. And we are grateful to see what God has in store for us as we continue to move forward. What a season when we talk about resurrection in the midst of a COVID virus, in the midst of social distancing, to find places of resurrection, that there is still power in the name of Jesus. And so we look to receive this final blessing. We look to receive it as we prepare our hearts and minds to depart this place. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord place God's countenance upon you and give you peace both now and forevermore. People of God who love God together say amen.
Say amen and say amen. We'll see you next week, Lord willing. Y'all take care. Take care of yourself and take care of each other. Until then, we'll see you later. Be good. Peace. God bless you.